Several instances of interaction between Buddhism and the Roman world are documented by classical and early Christian writers. Pandian Embassy Roman historical accounts describe an embassy sent by the Indian king Porus Pandian, Pandya, or Pandita, to Caesar Augustus sometime between 22 BC and 13 AD. The embassy was travelling with a diplomatic letter on a skin in Greek, and one of its members was a Sramana who burned himself alive in Athens to demonstrate his faith. The event made a sensation and was described by Nicolaus of Damascus, who met the embassy at Antioch near present-day Antakya in Turkey and related by Strabo 15, 1, 73 2, and Dio Cassius Liv. 9. A tomb was made to the Sramana, still visible in the time of Plutarch, which bore the mention, Zarmanochegas Indas Apo Bargozas Zarmanochegas from Baragaza in India Strabo also states that Nicolaus of Damascus in giving the details of his tomb inscription specified his name was Zarmanochegas and he immortalized himself according to the custom of his country Cassius Dio Hist 54.9 and Plutarch cite the same story Charles Eliot in his Hinduism and Buddhism and historical sketch 1921 considers that the name Zarmanochegas perhaps contains the two words Sramana and Akarya H. L. Jones' translation of the inscription as mentioned by Strabo reads it as, "...the Sramana master, an Indian, a native of Bargosa, having immortalized himself according to the custom of his country, lies here." These accounts at least indicate that Indian religious men Sramanas, to which the Buddhists belonged, as opposed to Hindu Brahmanas were circulating in the Levant during the time of Jesus. Buddhist culture and pre-Christian Greece By the time of Jesus, the teachings of the Buddha had already spread through much of India and penetrated into Sri Lanka, Central Asia and China. They display certain similarities to Christian moral precepts of more than five centuries later, the sanctity of life, compassion for others, rejection of violence, confession and emphasis on charity and the practice of virtue. Will Durant, noting that the Emperor Ashoka sent missionaries, not only to elsewhere in India and to Sri Lanka, but to Syria, Egypt and Greece, speculated in the 1930s that they may have helped prepare the ground for Christian teaching. <laughs> Mauryan proselytizing Ashoka ascended the throne of India around 270 BC. After his conversion to Buddhism he dispatched missionaries to the four points of the compass. Archaeological finds indicate these missions had been «favorably received» in lands to the west. Ptolemy II Philadelphus, one of the monarchs Ashoka mentions in his edicts, is recorded by Pliny the Elder as having sent an ambassador named Dionysus to the Mauryan court at Pataliputra. India has been treated of by several other Greek writers who resided at the courts of Indian kings, such, for instance, as Megasthenes, and by Dionysus, who was sent thither by Philadelphus, expressly for the purpose, all of whom have enlarged upon the power and vast resources of these nations." Records from Alexandria, long a crossroads of commerce and ideas, indicate that itinerant monks from the Indian subcontinent may have influenced philosophical currents of the time. Roman accounts centuries later speak of monks travelling to the Middle East, and there is mention of an embassy sent by the Indian king Pandian, or Porus possibly Pandya, to Caesar Augustus around 13 AD see Pandian embassy section above. <laughs> <laughs> Expansion of Buddhist culture westward Meanwhile, the Buddha's teachings had spread northwest, into Parthian territory. Buddhist stupa remains have been identified as distant as the Silk Road city of Merv. Soviet archaeological teams in Jawar Kala, near Merv, have uncovered a Buddhist monastery, complete with huge Buddharupa. Parthian nobles such as in Shikau are known to have adopted Buddhism and were among those responsible for its further spread towards China. <laughs> Western knowledge of Buddhism Some knowledge of Buddhism existed quite early in the West. In the 2nd century AD Clement of Alexandria wrote about the Buddha, 3 
Isi de ton inden hoi twa buta pithominoi peringolmasen hundi hyperbolin semnotitos host the intetanka. Among the Indians are those philosophers also who follow the precepts of Buddha, whom they honor as a god on account of his extraordinary sanctity. He also recognized Bactrian Buddhists and Indian gymnosophists for their influence on Greek thought, for Thus philosophy, a thing of the highest utility, flourished in antiquity among the barbarians, shedding its light over the nations. And afterwards it came to Greece. First in its ranks were the prophets of the Egyptians, and the Chaldeans among the Assyrians, and the Druids among the Gauls, and the Sramanas among the Bactrians and the philosophers of the Celts, and the Magi of the Persians, who foretold the Saviour's birth, and came into the land of Judea guided by a star. The Indian gymnosophists are also in the number, and the other barbarian philosophers. And of these there are two classes, some of them called Sramanas and others Brahmins the story of the birth of the Buddha was also known. A fragment of Archelaus of Kara 278 AD mentions the Buddha's virgin birth, and Saint Jerome 4th century mentions the birth of the Buddha, who he says was born from the side of a virgin. Queen Maya came to bear the Buddha after receiving a prophetic dream in which she foresaw the descent of the Bodhisattva, Buddha to be, from the Tasita heaven into her womb. This story has some parallels with the story of Jesus being conceived in connection with the visitation of the Holy Spirit to the Virgin Mary. <inaudible> Buddhism and Gnosticism Early 3rd century 4th century Christian writers such as Hippolytus and Epiphanius write about a Scythianus, who visited India around 50 AD from where he brought the doctrine of the two principles. According to Cyril of Jerusalem, Scythiana's pupil Terabinthus presented himself as a Buddha. He called himself Buddhas. 5. Terabinthus went to Palestine and Judea, becoming known and condemned, and ultimately settled in Babylon, where he transmitted his teachings to Mani, thereby creating the foundation of Manichaeism. But Terabinthus, his disciple in this wicked error, inherited his money and books and heresy, and came to Palestine, and becoming known and condemned in Judea, he resolved to pass into Persia, but lest he should be recognized there also by his name, he changed it and called himself Buddhas. Topic see also Greco Buddhism, Roman trade with India, Sino Roman relations. Topic notes Carat Strabo on the immolation of the Sramana in Athens, paragraph 73 Carat Clement of Alexandria the Stromata, or Miscellanies Book 1, Chapter 15 Carat Clement of Alexandria the Stromata, or Miscellanies Book 1, Chapter 15 Carat Cyril of Jerusalem, Catechetical Lecture 6 Carat Porphyry on abstinence from animal food Book IV, paragraphs 17 and 18. Topic references Topic Further reading Keon, Damien Dictionary of Buddhism. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-860560-9. Boardman, John The Diffusion of Classical Art in Antiquity. Princeton University Press. ISBN 0-691-03680-2. Linson, Robert Living Zen. New York, Grove Press. ISBN 0-8021-3136-0. Adamson, John, Musée Guimet Paris, et al., 2001. National Museum Arts Asiatiques Guimet in French. Paris, Réunion des Musées Nationaux Nationaux. ISBN 2-7118-3897-8. OCLC 469081697. Foltz, Richard Religions of the Silk Road. New York, Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-230-62125-1. McEvely, Thomas The Shape of Ancient Thought. Comparative Studies in Greek and Indian Philosophies. New York, Allworth Press. ISBN 1-58115-203-5. The Times Atlas of Archaeology. London, Times Books Limited, 1991. ISBN 9780723003069. Hoffman, Michael. 1981. OL7865163M. Elliot, Sir Charles. Hinduism and Buddhism, an Historical Sketch. 
ISBN 81-215-1093-7. Arrington, Elizabeth, Cribb, Joe, eds. 1992. The Crossroads of Asia, Transformation in Image and Symbol in the Art of Ancient Afghanistan and Pakistan, with Maggie Claringbowl. Cambridge, Ancient India and Iran Trust. ISBN 0-9518399-1-8. OCLC 27386749. OL 1482548M.